Before this video begins, I want to give a big shout out to my top tier Patreon member, Daoist Soul Weaver. You are a legend. If you want to support the channel beyond the much appreciated like and subscription, then definitely head on over to my Patreon. The link is in the description as always. With that said, let's begin the video. So the Sonic Frontiers prologue titled Divergence just released and it's safe to say that it was amazing. I mean all the positive comments that I've already gotten from just you guys telling me how good it is and then the extremely positive feedback from the community, that should be telling enough. With this video, I'm going to show you guys the footage of my initial reaction to what I saw and then we're going to take a deeper dive into the character of Knuckles in this prologue. As well as that, I am doing a giveaway of Sonic Frontiers, so stick around till after the analysis for more information on that. But without further ado, here's my reaction to the footage. Okay, here we go. Fingers crossed for some good characterization for Knuckles. Angel Island. Okay, Angel Island, great start. I have to see they remember that place. Also, Knuckles' voice sounds a bit different here. I am its guardian. I watch over the Master Emerald and every living thing here. That is to say, okay, all good. The, plants and animals. the way this looks and his the shot, it's giving me vibes for Sonic Adventure I 1. I do things on my own, and that's just how I like it. I don't need anyone else to get by. But sometimes, I wonder how things would be if I hadn't been given this response. Why was I chosen for this duty? Perhaps it's karma. Yeah, that kind of introspection just gives Adventure One. Oh, there you go. There's Tikal. It just it's giving such Adventure One vibes right now. Interesting choice. The question is, whose power was it originally? Who built this shrine to the emeralds? And where did they go? Okay, so there's Tikal, and I think I see Sky Sanctuary in the background. Yep, I do. To protect my home, I need to know every possible vulnerability. I, I like that they've got him. Oh, there's Chow. That's nice. I like how they've got him being dutiful to his role. In defending the emerald. Yeah, it also looks like they're playing into his care of animals and stuff. And that's kind of. That's been a cool part of his character for a while. I like that they're showing a bit of a softer side with certain aspects of his character as well. Yep. Hey, uh, they're there. Um, here. This is what you were looking for. I think that mask is also the same as the those little jumping things that we saw before in the trailer. Coco, I think they're called. Coco's. I don't know, someone correct me on that if I'm completely wrong. Also, you just picked up a portal gear, which probably means there's going to be a cyberspace portal in here. So I'm guessing this is going to tell us how he reached the uh, Starfall Islands. Yeah, there's the cyberspace portal. Man, I love this art style, the way it's looking right now. It looks so much like... Uh, the, the kind of like the comic books art style being brought to life in animation. It looks so good. I'm loving this. Okay. What was that? What? Where am I? This isn't my island. Is this another one of your tricks, Eggman? Show okay. yourself! Okay, I like that he uh, is questioning if it's Eggman and if it's another trick of Eggman, showing that he's learnt from uh, the past. Good. So that's consistent with the character. 
Okay, there's enemies. Are, are we gonna get a fight scene? Are we gonna get a fight scene? Oh, come on, please. Please, please, please show Knuckles being fucking cool with the fight scene, please. Please. Fucking yes, okay. <laughs> oh, this looks so good. And this music as well. Oh. No, oh, did he just knock off the entire <laughs> He did. That was so fucking cool. Okay, that that's fucking badass. All right, uh, kn kn Knuckles, you reclaimed badass status in the games. Okay. Hey, Asura, and is that Sage? I think I saw Sage there. Yeah. Okay, there's Sage. Presumably Knuckles loses the f yeah okay. So Knuckles this 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 is how Knuckles was imprisoned. I do things on my own. That's just how I like it. I don't need anyone else to get by. Interesting line. Sometimes. But sometimes Okay, so I gonna Okay. Um there's <laughs> God. God, I am so happy right now. Oh shit, this music. I'm gonna let the credits play out because this music is fucking cool. And is that is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, um, I <laughs> oh, I'm so happy right now. They've 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 actually gone and done it. They've it it looks like they've redeemed Knuckles' character. <laughs> just oh my. <laughs> okay, okay. Just give give me a minute. I, I I'll be back. Give me a minute. So, I hope you enjoyed the reaction, now let's break down this video and talk about the characterization of Knuckles. The first thing that I want to say is that this animation is gorgeous. I've always personally thought that Sonic looked better with a 2D art style rather than a 3D one. I just feel like it suits the characters more in the expressions. Not to say that we haven't gotten good 3D Sonic, I mean just look at some of the phenomenal pre-rendered cutscenes in games like 06 and Unleashed. But when you look at the art style of games like Adventure 2 done by Yuji Okawa, it just breathes personality. And then you look at forces and you wonder what the hell happened here. As well as this, the voice actor for Knuckles here has definitely improved since his debut in Team Sonic Racing. I can't quite explain exactly how it's better, but maybe it has something to do with the fact that he actually has a well-written script to follow. Here's hoping Roger can follow suit. As for the character of Knuckles, <laughs> come on, we all know this was fantastic. It was so great to see him like this again, man. I was in from the moment they showed Angel Island and the Master Emerald, because when was the last time we saw those in the games? Pretty much since Sonic Heroes, Angel Island was forgotten about and Knuckles' role as the Master Emerald Guardian became non-existent, even though he is the only Guardian. I mean, this is the same guy who traveled across the world to find scattered shards of the emerald on his own. It is so good to see him being dutiful to his role once again and that he's going to great lengths to protect Angel Island. He even, as we saw, explores around in order to find any weaknesses or vulnerabilities that could be exploited so that he can better defend his home. That's just a really great way to tie his character into finding that cyberspace portal rather than just having him randomly come across it with no explanation, which would have been the case if it was the 2010s writers. From the very beginning of this animation, it gave me vibes of Adventure 1, and the opening monologue with its introspection pretty much cemented that thought in place. Much like Adventure 1, he wonders about his duty and why he's the guardian of the Master Emerald, but then he also questions what life would be like without the burden of this responsibility. He still doesn't know why he's doing what he's doing, but he just does it because that's all he knows how to do. We even saw with the end of Adventure 1 that he has accepted the fact that he doesn't have all the answers, but is just okay with doing what he's always been doing. He also talks about how he likes being on his own, and that plays into one of his biggest traits, which is his introversion. 
Knuckles has always been an introverted character, but that was expected when he'd pretty much been alone on his island for his whole life, so social skills really aren't going to be his defining feature. To clear this up now, he did develop a bit from his almost pure introversion via his character development between Sonic 3 and Sonic Heroes, where he learnt to soften up a bit and take things a little easier. Until Sonic Heroes, the Master Emerald was his main prerogative, but he did show some growth in Adventure 2 by working with Sonic and the guys with no real reluctance. And then there was the, uh, other two reasons that contributed to his character development. And then in Heroes, he completed his arc by mellowing out much more and actively choosing to hang out with Sonic and Tails. With all that said, this characterization that we saw with the monologue almost tells me that this is a kind of soft reset for the character, taking him back to his Adventure 2 days rather than being consistent with the fully completed character arc from Heroes, and I am fine with that. Adventure Knuckles is probably my favourite interpretation, and it isn't like we don't see any growth here at all. For example, Knuckles' naivete was always a big part of his character, but when he travels to the Starfall Islands, he immediately questions if this was another one of Eggman's tricks, which shows growth from him being tricked in the past due to his naivete. He also questions the origins of the Master Emerald and the Shrine, so that possibly means that it will tie into the Starfall Islands. Especially seeing as there was a cyberspace portal in Sky Sanctuary, and in the prequel comics we learnt that the Emeralds are gathering at the islands for some reason. This makes it feel like the story of Sonic Frontiers is going to be integral to the lore of the Emeralds, so it's going to play a pretty big part in Sonic lore overall. Another trait they managed to briefly display was his hot-headedness, particularly with the fight sequence. My god, that fight sequence was amazing, man, when he took down that entire cliff and it was so smoothly animated, and then when he was punching and- Six and a half hours later. It wasn't overdone like his hot-headedness in Lost World, for example, but it was just a small aspect of his character that was nicely layered on top, and that's how it's always been. So it didn't feel out of place for his character. And I like that they did show Knuckles as a capable fighter. I mean, did you see that cliff go down? He has always been extremely strong, even going back to Sonic 3, the first thing he did was knock Sonic out of his super form and then mug his emerald. That takes a lot of power, so I'm glad he's getting that respect back. But it isn't all anger and strength, this prologue also showcases a bit of his softer side, particularly with the Chow. Can I just say it's so good to see the Chow again, and why don't we have a Chow Garden game yet, Sega? Seriously, get on that shit, you will make a ton of cash. But uh... As I was saying, Knuckles goes out of his way to tend to the Chow by knocking down fruit for them and helping to get the Knight's Chow his Coco Mask back. Also, Coco Mask tying into the Sonic Frontiers game, yeah. Knuckles has always cared for animals, and like he said, he will protect his home, including all the creatures that inhabit it. And then at the end, we get another little monologue of how he likes to do things on his own, but then he goes on to start a new sentence saying the words, but sometimes, and then the credits roll. This shows Knuckles' growth once again with how he knows that there are times where he does need to rely on others. His own strength can only get him so far and now he's trapped in this prison that he can't get out of. But possibly, the best thing about this animation is that Knuckles isn't a dumbass or a joke. For a while now, he's been the franchise's comedic punching bag, which really didn't sit right. The Sonic Boom TV show managed to make it funny, but it still felt out of character. The movie so far has been the only one successful in making Knuckles funny while staying in character. This was because the comedy played off of Knuckles' lack of understanding of Earth culture, rather than just making him dumb for the sake of being dumb. In the games, his writing post-Heroes was just awful. Beginning with Sonic 06, he partook in some very awkward and unfunny physical comedy and it only got worse from there. He has never been the same and his character has just been constantly flanderized, but here they've shown that they know what they're doing with the character. This is the first time in over 15 years that I can comfortably say that Knuckles is in character again. He looks to be headstrong, determined, introverted, and yet can see the importance of others with that ending. He is powerful with a temper, but he does have compassion within him in helping the Chow. He has grown from his naive days and is back to being dutiful in his role in guarding the Master Emerald. All of this to show that Knuckles is back, and I could not be happier. It has been quite the little journey with this one character on my channel, but I'm glad to say that it looks like we get the happy ending. So, with the analysis out the way, I want to quickly announce the giveaway of Sonic Frontiers. This is a gift to all of you who just watch my content and for just being such a phenomenal community. I remember reading this comment which talks about the channel, but then also talks about how great the community surrounding the channel is and how thoughtful everyone is in the comment section. I enjoy reading what you guys say so much and that's actually how to enter this giveaway. You just need to leave an interesting comment below. 
Talk about anything, it could be this animation, or your thoughts on the franchise, be it games, comic books, etc. I'll put them all into a random generator and the winner will be announced in 48 hours via a community post, so keep an eye out for that to see if you win. But with all that said, thank you guys for watching the video. If you did enjoy then feel free to leave a like, subscribe, and turn notifications on to keep up with all future content. If you want to go above and beyond in supporting the channel, then why not check out my Patreon via the link in the description below. And speaking of which, a very big thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are absolute legends. With all that said though, I do hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.